bonjour a tous. Buenos días a todos. I apologize uh, not uh, giving uh, my lecture in French in this uh, wonderful language, the language of uh, Victor Hugo, uh, Proust, um, and all the gra great uh, uh, French uh, writers. And uh, one of my uh, tasks for this year is <coughs> to speak French, to speak uh, friendly French, sorry. Um, first of all, I want to thank uh, Ian for all uh, his, uh, her support uh, for me and for working together for have uh, uh, topics uh, related with photocatalysis linked uh, with uh, her speciality. And uh, secondly, I want to thank uh, all the uh, people of the staff of the LCP because uh, all the time uh, try to help me and try to solve everything that is uh, coming to, to with this uh, uh, bureaucratic uh, activities in my country and to come here. Okay, uh, and uh <coughs> also I, I want to, to, to thank uh, um, Monsieur Sida because uh, he uh, advised, uh, he suggested uh, me uh, that title. So, uh, the title is, uh, is ambitious, it's just to, to exactly know if uh, could we produce hydrogen by an efficient photocatalytic process. It's difficult in just uh, one talk to, to, to know and to, to have an answer, but uh, I will try. <coughs> okay, um, Conacid is uh, equivalent to CNRS. Um, this is my institution, it's similar to uh, Paris U, uh, University of Paris Saclay, <coughs> and this is my, uh, my uh, school, it's a uh, um, um, uh, school of chemical engineering, so uh, I, I appreciate uh, the, the support of, of, of my country to, to, to stay here one semester. Uh, I am resting for teaching, I am resting for uh, the pollution of uh, Mexico City, <laughs> but um, what is important to say here is uh, we are um, uh, in a balance uh, between two, <coughs> two countries and two institutions because uh, our um, main task uh, is uh, la técnica al servicio de la patria. In the case of uh, the University uh, Paris Saclay is um, in Spanish is comprender el futuro para comprender el mundo para construir el futuro. So we are, uh, the, the, spe the technical specs linked with a more uh, ambitious uh, and humanistic aspects. Uh, I will start with this uh, uh, beautiful paragraph that uh, maybe saved my life in, the, in my uh, teenager. <coughs> Again in Spanish, sorry, I feel in Spanish. Uh, para mí solo recorrer los caminos que tienen corazón cualquier camino que tenga corazón. Por allí yo recorro, y la única prueba que vale es atravesarlo todo. Y por allí yo recorro mirando, mirando, sin aliento. This is a, a, a main paragraph in this uh, uh, famous uh, book. In the, sorry, we, we will try with this one. I think it's better. Uh, in the teachings of Don Juan, is uh, 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 Jackie is a, um, a knowledge a knowledge man who was uh, um, working with this uh, guy Carlos Castaneda uh, in order to to get uh, uh, his PhD in the University of California. So <coughs> that's why uh, I think uh, um, uh, working in uh, in this uh, kind of uh, paths and with uh, luminous people is. Is, I think it's a good, it's a good option in these times. Okay, let's speak, let's speak uh, about uh, uh, Mexico, just uh, a little introduction. Uh, we have uh, petroleum, silver, copper, gold, lead, zinc, natural gas, a little bit, uh, timber. Uh, we have the Pico de Orizaba, uh, 5,700 uh, meters is the, the highest one. Is Aurelius here? Aurelio is here? Is, uh, is, is okay this uh, height? Or? Yeah? Okay. And uh, we have uh, arable land, uh, no more than 13%. Uh, 
of course, uh, a lot of tsunamis and uh, volcanoes, uh, earthquakes, normally um, in this area. And all this, all this area is uh, for earthquakes. Um, our population is uh, mainly American and Spanish, 60%, uh, American, uh, Indian, 30%, uh, and white, 99%. So, well, uh, in, uh, in this uh, uh, slide, I just I want to show you that uh, uh, Don Juan, the famous Jackie Indian, uh, was living here. And uh, I was living just uh, 15, uh, 50 kilometers from, from the border of the US. But uh, I was uh, looking for him, but I never found, found him. So maybe it's fiction. But uh, Carlos Castaneda got his, uh, his PhD. Okay, this is our national emblem. It's a beautiful uh, green, blank in color, uh, which uh, was uh, shown with uh, next uh, Sunday in the um, uh, Eiffel Tower, uh, just uh, because uh, for the first time, the left has won the, the, the election for president. So we are happy. Well, at least fifty percent of more, who, including me, I'm happy because we we will have an opportunity to have a different government. So this is an eagle uh, eating a serpent, and uh, this is a very very nice uh, emblem. Okay, um, speaking uh, uh, about uh, my institution, uh, let me tell you that uh, my uh, my institution is. Uh, uh, has a strong influence of, uh, Fran of France because uh, um, our uh, only dictator, Porfirio Diaz, who is uh, resting in uh, Père Lachaise, uh, by the way, uh, it was a, a, a lover of the uh, French culture. And uh, after uh, finishing here in, uh, in, in France, uh, after uh, his death, uh, he and others, uh, well-educated uh, people, uh, decided to join all the, the small schools of engineering and other areas uh, in uh, Instituto Politecnico Nacional. But the, the main uh, founders of this institution uh, were educated in France. So that's why it's the, the, the influence of France is here. So we have, uh, in, in, ca in, in, the, in terms of the distribution of the areas of uh, education, uh, engineering, 43 percent, and the medicine and biology and agriculture so are the main areas. But uh, check that the, the engineering aspects are the most important in uh, in this institution. Okay, uh, going to my our lab in my institution. Uh, our lab is uh, materials and catalysis lab. So we are working in many areas. Uh, my colleagues and uh, PhDs and um, uh, Master of Science uh, students and a lot of uh, bachelor. Uh, particularly, I'm uh, focusing right now in photocatalysis. And uh, we are now thinking to, to work in uh, this, this new topic, microstructural reactors, for applications in hydrogen production and CO2 uh, reduction. So, uh, <coughs> of course, we have a, a very nice uh, institution uh, linked to IPN. It's uh, el, um, uh, Centro de Estudios Avanzados, uh, where Aurelio uh, got the, his PhD. So it's more dedicated to basic research and, and applied research, of course. Well, um, uh, honestly, uh, I'm uh, dedicated in the last uh, five years uh, just to study these three reactions. Well, this is uh, at the beginning, just at the beginning. But uh, for me, these uh, photosynthetic uh, reactions are a big challenge for this century. So we need to study this uh, kind of reactions in uh, different ways, catalytic, photocatalytic, electrocatalytic, photoelectrocatalytic, etc. So uh, right now we are uh, focusing more in uh, uh, water splitting with uh, variation. Uh, I, I, I will uh, tell you in a minute uh, what about water splitting. But uh, if we uh, show us uh, the uh, pictorial representation of hydrogen economy, 
Uh, what we can see is that uh, water electrolysis is uh, considered that uh, the best way to produce hydrogen, uh, considering that the renewable energy uh, will have a remnant of uh, electrical energy uh, for working with uh, uh, water electrolysis and then uh, uh, to store as hydrogen, that is a, a challenge uh, uh, yet. Uh, to uh, with applications for fuel cells, uh, b b burning, uh, transportation, etc. So, but uh, we think that uh, this alternative uh, using uh, just uh, water, solar light, and a solid uh, photocatalyst to, to directly produce hydrogen, it will be a good option in the. Um, 2050 maybe or less uh, time uh, for applications for fuel cells and, uh, and transportation and uh, of course many uh, transformation of uh, hydrogen with CO2 to produce uh, skin gas etc. But the only way that uh, can be a, a sustainable process and uh, in terms of cost interesting is to use um, this kind of metals at the beginning, or, of course, iron. Because if we try to use, uh, for instance, uh, uh, rare hertz that uh, normally can be useful for these reactions, uh, sometimes uh, is uh, uh, localized in a specific area of the world. But uh, iron, maybe a lot of countries have this, this uh, um, kind of uh, compounds that can be transformed in a useful catalyst. Of course, uh, there are many, many obstacles to, to, to go to a um, renewable e energy e era because, as uh, is well um, mentioned in, in this book, by uh, this paragraph by James Canton, of course, the Stone Age did not end for lack of stone. And the old age will end long before the war runs out of oil. So, in my particular point of view, I disagree with the fracking. I think fracking is not a good idea. So can be stay uh, there for centuries, the oil. OK, uh, let's go to hydrogen production routes. <coughs> uh, in general, uh, sorry, uh, I decided just, just to, to add this, these two options, five options. There are other options. But uh, what we can see here is that uh, after 2000, uh, the 2000 year, uh, it was an exponential increase in, uh, in, the, in the number of publications and, and also in patents uh, concerning the hydrogen production. But uh, uh, at the beginning, the, the most important uh, route uh, is, uh, was uh, uh, biomass. But uh, right now, in the 2011 uh, and 2050, <laughs> so it's almost the, the, the same trend. In the case of electro, uh, photo and uh, photoelectrocatalytic routes. So th the term catalytic is uh, uh, like a um, uh, plateau. Uh, so it's not important. It's not important to develop a new catalyst for a, a process well recognized like uh, steam reforming. <coughs> uh, steam reforming is in terms of uh, global uh, warming potential is uh, um, in, this, uh, in this place, but uh, check uh, that uh, biomass uh, process is uh, not uh, a good idea in if, if we don't, uh, if, if we cannot uh, uh, capture the CO2 produced uh, during the transformation of uh, hydrogen. <coughs> and uh, in terms of cost, uh, the, the, the cheapest uh, one is steam reforming. So that's why uh, it, it's, it will be, be very, very difficult to change the idea in terms of uh, industrial um, production of hydrogen to, to go to, to, try to, to use a solar, for instance, that is uh, the, the, the cost uh, right now is uh, at around uh, ten dollars per kilogram of hi hydrogen uh, in comparison in comparison with uh, uh, steam reforming or biomass. So biomass and, and solar. In, uh, in terms of cost as uh, 
the, the best options. Okay, um, that's why I, it's uh, um, proposed uh, in in the in terms of industrial application that uh, after this uh, uh, first uh, generation of uh, thermal process to obtain uh, um, hydrogen uh, for application in synthesis of methanol, synthesis of ammonia, uh, fission process, etc. <coughs> we are uh, uh, right now uh, in Merced in a new generation of uh, uh, process using ethanol, bioethanol or uh, glycerol uh, for thermocatalytic reforming. Check that it's the same. So it's difficult to change uh, the idea of a, renewable, uh, a new sustainable process different than the thermochemical process for, for the same uh, um, compound, syngas, syngas, to obtain these main compounds. So the third uh, process of the second generation will be photoreforming. So photoreforming is a link, it's a, a, a easy version of water splitting to produce chemicals and uh, try to, to, to be a, a clean process compared with these uh, two processes. So in this case, uh, photoreforming is uh, uh, different in terms of uh, thermodynamics concerning to water splitting. So we need, uh, we have uh, uh, a long uh, gives energy the, the required to, to, to crack uh, the water to hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, in this case, it's uh, lower, it's just uh, 9.3 compared to this big amount. So that's why uh, people is uh, trying to, to, to test uh, the catalyst uh, in a photoreforming process, process, not in a water splitting. And uh, sometimes uh, there are many misconceptions and in, in, in mistakes in the, in the publication that they uh, sh show in the title water splitting but they, they don't mention just at the end of the conclusions that, uh, that uh, they uh, are not using just water. They are using uh, an organic compound. Could be hydrogen, uh, methanol, could be ethanol, and whatever. But uh, uh, this uh, photoreforming reactions is very easy uh, compared to this one. Uh, can be uh, normally is uh, methanol is the, the, the conventional compound a mo model compound to test the, the photoactivity. So uh, this is a more um, uh, clear comparison between two processes. Uh, in this uh, process, we need two, two co-catalysts uh, to obtain oxygen and hydrogen. In this uh, process, we can use whatever we, we, we have, uh, our waste organic, uh, and then uh, to produce hy hydrogen. So we, we only need one co-catalyst. <coughs> Ideally, uh, the, the best catalyst should be uh, um, that uh, uh, compound with platinum, like uh, co-catalyst for hydrogen production, and ruthenium oxide for the uh, oxidation of water. So this uh, catalyst is, is very good in comparison with platinum or ruthenium oxide, etc but it's too expensive. So it's, it's, it's not possible to think uh, uh, in a um, sustainable process using this kind of photocatalyst. Okay, just to finish with the uh, um, photoreforming process, uh, another uh, important uh, thing is that uh, we can uh, transform the, the oxygen, the, um, the organic compound to produce uh, um, CO2 plus water, but if uh, the photocatalytic system can uh, oxidize water, okay, it's welcome because we have uh, another uh, amount of protons to be reduced here and to produce a lot amount of hydrogen. Okay, but uh, not, uh, not uh, everything is, uh, um, is uh, how can I say in English, in uh, American, is uh, um, honey under uh, on on flakes, something like that. Okay, it's not an easy task. So there are many many uh, aspects to be considered because if you uh, look uh, the the reference concerning to water splitting in uh, Scopus or in uh, another uh, um, 
uh, area, uh, you can uh, obtain more than 2,000 uh, publications and a different uh, photocatalyst made of uh, all the periodic tab table. So we need to, to have a, a, a design of, uh, of the catalyst in terms of parameters, parameters associated with orbital water splitting because we have these six points to be considered after uh, checking uh, the uh, photoactivity of the catalyst. So what about photon absorption? If it's possible, the one solid to absorb photons under solar light, not only with visible light, because some people say, no, it's just, is, is it visible with this, is it active with visible light? It's, it's a good catalyst. But uh, solar light, it, it, it has a little bit of UV, but a big amount of infrared. So photon absorption is very important. Excitant separation, of course. Carrier diffusion is the work of uh, Christophe. Christophe is not here. Uh, carrier transport, and of course, the catalytic efficiency and the orbital uh, efficiency linked to mass transfer. So we are thinking in uh, um, basic aspects linked with uh, technological or, or engineering aspects. This is very nice uh, publications. So uh, this and, and these uh, slides, I think, is the, 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 the main uh, aspects to be considered for designing a good photocatalyst. <coughs> well, this uh, 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 is an strategy for high photoconversion efficiency and selectivity. If we uh, want to convert just water, CO2 or nitrogen to water, CO or hydrocarbons or for ammonia, we need to take into account these all aspects. So these all aspects means that uh, physical chemist, physics, um, specialist in uh, <coughs> uh, chemistry of solid state and um, engineers and so on, uh, need to uh, integrate uh, a, a, a chain of study uh, to develop new photocatalysts to obtain these compounds. Uh, in our case, we are just focusing right now in the uh, design of co-catalysts uh, linked to semiconductors active uh, with visible light. So let me show you uh, what uh, uh, we have done in, this, in the last uh, four or five years concerning to hydrogen production. So our uh, first uh, approach to, to this topic is to prepare these two expensive uh, catalysts because we used 1% uh, to 10% uh, of, uh, per of platinum in uh, <coughs> platinum TiO2 hollow nanostructure. So it was very nice. Uh, this is a very nice uh, sunflower obtained by uh, an easy uh, procedure uh, in, in, uh, to have uh, uh, platinum particle nanoparticles here and uh, with a shell of TiO2. So it was working very good with uh, the UV light, but uh, <coughs> the uh, hydrogen gel was, uh, was uh, very low. So we decided to stop uh, working with this uh, photocatalyst. Then uh, Fabian Martinez, who is uh, right now working, and uh, he's in the, uh, with his PhD in the University of California, San Diego, um, decided to, to use these uh, um, marvelous structures uh, of uh, MOFs, metal organic uh, frameworks, or coordination uh, polymers of coordination, co coordination polymers, uh, linked to semiconductors. That's why we use uh, P25 linked to this copper muff. So we obtain good results in terms of hydrogen production uh, compared with that uh, reported in the literature. And uh, the most important thing is that uh, uh, this is the fresh catalyst. And after using this is uh, uh, a new catalyst. We, we, we can transform this uh, muff with the use of UV light and the muff we can transform in a copper nanocatalyst. So this is a mixture of uh, a metallic copper, copper one and copper two. And it's uh, recyclable. 
Okay, this is the very nice results of TRMEC, uh, which uh, can support uh, the, the behavior of the catalyst. We can uh, make a very good uh, photocatalytic cycle, but uh, of course we need to optimize the, the amount of, uh, of copper, etc. <coughs> Uh, this is uh, another work of this uh, guy. He uh, has uh, obtained a PhD in um, uh, Mexico, linked to the U uh, uh, University of California in uh, uh, Berkeley. No, no, no. Well, in the University of California, one part of the Pacific Coast. And he, he, he was working with this kind of nanostructures. Well, not a nano, because it's uh, at around 500 or to 700 nanometers, so it's very nice, uh, spheres, uh, curve and polyhedral uh, particles. And then uh, um, we deposited in this uh, particles TiO2. <coughs> so we obtain again uh, good results, but the most important thing is that we use a very small amount of uh, copper. So this is very smaller uh, amount uh, concerning to TiO2, and we can uh, check at the same time the min mineralization of methanol. In this case, you, we use methanol, and uh, of course, we can uh, follow the change of coloration of the photocatalyst, and uh, uh, the transformation is here to copper or two, so we can uh, have a very good and stable photocatalyst. With the support of uh, TRMC and other characterization techniques, we can propose a photocatalytic uh, waterfall. Uh, in this case, there is a cooperation between copper one oxide, uh, copper two oxide, and the TiO2 with the rutile anatase. So this is a, a was a very, very nice result. <coughs> and, and then uh, we can uh, uh, mention the work of Ana Laura Luna. Uh, everybody knows Ana Laura. He, she got uh, the PhD here in 2015. 16, 2016. And uh, at the beginning, he was working with gold and nickel and nickel gold uh, TiO2, supporting TiO2. Very, very nice uh, nanoparticles. Um, and then was tested in uh, hydrogen production uh, with methanol. So, what we see here is a very good uh, correlation between photonic uh, aspects of the solid with. Uh, activity. This is apparent, in, uh, apparent uh, quantum efficiency. So what we see here is the, this is a very nice uh, photocatalyst, uh, explain it in terms of the photonic uh, <coughs> behavior and the photoactivity. So we, we, we can work in this area of uh, webland just to have the, high, the higher uh, photonic efficiency. So the results were explained in this way. So we need a, a small amount of, of oil and gold, no more than 0.5%, uh, and uh, the rest is uh, nickel oxide. Nickel oxide is cheaper compared with gold, so we can propose a very good uh, photocatalyst for hydrogen production. Pardon. The other one by Ana Laura is uh, this uh, photocatalyst ma made of uh, uh, well, TiO2 was compared with palladium, nickel, and uh, nickel palladium uh, uh, nanoparticles. Again, we, we have uh, obtained a very good correlations and in, in a very nice uh, behavior of uh, the photonic uh, aspects with the photoactivity uh, of the catalyst <coughs> in terms of light absorption, charge carry separation, and hydrogen production. So. Uh, in this case, palladio, uh, it was uh, higher than uh, nickel, so we need to optimize this uh, composition. Finally, in terms of uh, what we have done in, in hydrogen production, uh, this is the word of uh, Jun Ru Kang. Jun Ru Kang, everybody knows? Oui. Everybody who was working in the lab uh, in this uh, in the second uh, stage uh, knew Jun Ru. Juro was working with um, magnesium ferrite, supported in the TiO2 P25, and uh, um, after checking the photoactivity of this uh, material without this co-catalyst, 
So we decided to make a formulation of uh, nickel sulfide, the magnesium ferrite, the P25, and it was incredible, this big amount of hydrogen. So this, this, this catalyst is, uh, the, the catalytic behavior is very similar to that compared to, to that of uh, a noble metal. So we need to, to work uh, deeply with this kind of materials because we can, we can uh, modify the morphology or we can use the, the strateg strategical aspects that I mentioned in order to, to improve uh, uh, light absorption even in the infrared region. Okay, this is a um, an scheme. Uh, what what we think the, the is is happening? So we have uh, a marriage of uh, two semiconductors, magnesium ferrite, uh, uh, who can absorb a visible light, in theory, and uh, TiO2, and uh, a co-catalyst, nickel sulfide. Nickel sulfide is uh, is cheaper. So. We have many, many questions in the case of the use of co-catalyst. So we, can, uh, uh, we need to, to answer uh, all, all these questions in order to, to make a, a rational design of this kind of catalyst. Because the, the, the drawback of these uh, results is that uh, these photocatalysts were active only under UV light, UV of uh, 365 nanometers. So, so we need to to work with the nano transformation with the uh, um, core shell nanostructures. We need to, to work a lot with this kind of material, but at the beginning it was a very good uh, result. Okay, uh, just uh, a little bit about uh, photoreactors. Uh, photoreactors is another uh, uh, critical aspect, I think. Uh, in terms of evaluation of photocatalysts. Because we have a thin field type reactor, immersion type reactor, and powder type reactor. <coughs> Normally, in a conventional photocatalysis, in the degradation of uh, pollutants, the best one is using uh, powder. It's because the, there is an intima, uh, intimate uh, contact between the three phases, uh, oxygen, uh, in the case of degradation of, of pollutants, uh, the, the, the catalyst is solid, the, the, the water and the pollutant dissolve it in water, and this is the best one. And, uh, but in, in terms of uh, scaling and in terms of uh, checking one uh, post, uh, potential uh, industrial application, we need to think in, uh, in uh, thin films, something like this or something like this, but the efficiency is lower. That's why uh, a new, a new uh, option uh, has emerged uh, in uh, order to use uh, micro reactors. So this kind of micro reactor is uh, no more than um, uh, devices. For instance, this one is uh, around uh, two centimeters or three centimeters. And, uh, and inside there are a lot of cells where we, we can illuminate something like this. In this case, it's just for uh, UV light. Or, or blue light. But we can think in uh, another kind of reactors like uh, fluid set bed uh, batch uh, reactors, something like this. <coughs> and uh, we can have a, a catalyst in uh, microspheres working uh, in, uh, in, um, in a recirculatory uh, system with uh, vacuum. And uh, another uh, type could be this, uh, this one, th which uh, uh, can be uh, irradiated with uh, this uh, cheap uh, uh, halogen lamp or with, with solar light. Uh, and can be uh, built uh, with um, um, uh, ceramic uh, with uh, glass uh, windows. And then uh, to check uh, what about the photoactivity in uh, nor and real operation. Okay, let's go to conclusions. In conclusion, the photoreforming of alcohols, for, uh, uh, bioethanol, could become an efficient route to produce hydrogen using noble metal free photocatalyst and sunlight. An in depth study of water splitting is needed 
including theoretical aspects that allow an adequate design of selective and stable photocatalyst under sunlight. The design of multiphase photocatalytic reactors, microstructural reactors, as demonstration prototypes operating under solar light is strongly necessary. So we are at the beginning of this real history. So I'd like to thank again to Conacit, my institution, my school, San Jerez, uh, University Paisu, Paisa Clay, Momentum. I'm included in Momentum, working hard with Momentum. And of course, Hilremita, uh, and all my students. All my students, uh, they are working alone in these three buildings. So they need to, to finish uh, all the, the tasks I, I, uh, I request for, for them. And I finish with uh, Rambo.